In the far northeast of South Korea lies a massive abandoned ski resort. Being in the northeast of South Korea, this place is closer to the North Korean border than I would have liked to hope. So close to that, on the way here, a military dude holding a very large rifle stopped me and made me show him my camera footage. And after exploring Korea's version of Chernobyl, well at least looks wise, I'll be taking you to a North Korean refugee village where you will not only probably meet North Koreans, but get to eat North Korean cuisine. Alright guys, this is my room for tonight. Uh, Alright, well, see you in the morning. Uh, uh, good morning! So you might be wondering, where the heck are you at right now? Well, basically, in the northeastern side of uh, South Korea, there is, well, this place. It is an abandoned ski resort. It was opened from 1973 to 2006. In 2018, for the Winter Olympics, they tried repairing it. But, it was in disrepair. So, well, I came here last night. It was creepy as hell. I slept right here. It's pretty damn cold, I'm not gonna lie. But, I want to go explore this place. You can tell it's raining pretty hard. So you might be thinking, what the hell are you doing sleeping in this room? Are you trying to get, like, a disease? Trying to get asbestos and cancer inside of your lungs? The answer is, <laughs> I'm pretty stupid. <laughs> Anyways, let's get going. The building I slept in last night. I hear a dog barking. barking. What? There was a guard dog yesterday. Would you guys sleep in this building? I'm gonna get out of here and I'm going to, well, explore the rest of the areas. There is a guard dog. I'm not sure if there's any guards, so gotta be kinda careful. So the first goal is gonna be that clock tower over there, if you could see it in the smog. It's hard for me to say what all these buildings really are, but this looks like a hotel. That's a clock tower for telling the time. And these all just, I don't know, hotels? That many? It was a ski resort. So this right here is apparently the clock tower building. Let's go to the top, see if we can get into the clock. So I'm going up here. This part is fucking creepy. <laughs> what the fuck? That is fucking freaky, dude. God, there's another ladder. Looks like I can go higher. This is probably the clock tower here. Whoa, look at the fog. Try climbing this. There's just boards up there. Is that really safe? It's debatable. Uh, yeah, these are just planks. I don't think this part is realistic. Unless you really are in the mood for dying. I'm sure, honestly, how dangerous this is, but look at how this is held up with these things. That's fucking batshit crazy. You gotta be careful when you're walking here, you know. You might just fall to your death. Ooh. Ah. Heck yeah. This apocalyptic view that we can see from the top of the clock tower lies a reality that many business owners will be forced to face in the countryside of Korea. With many ski resorts having already opened closer to Seoul and Busan, traveling all the way to the mountains to a place with no train just stops really making any sense. 
This is possibly the pool right here. I'm not sure. Let's go in. This is the fucking bowling alley. Huh? Questionable door. Well, I can climb up that. Like the most, I guess, famous part probably. Well, I don't know, but it says Alps Ski Resort on it, and that's basically where we're at, Alps Ski Resort. So, uh, go in, see what the resort has to offer. Upon entering Alps Ski Resort, you instantly are met with a bad smell, very bad smell. Uh, you got this guy. Hey, big room. Do I go up or down? What do you guys say? I want to find the pool. Flip the pool would probably. And down doesn't look like anything. Go up. Oh, look at this. This is left here. A giant vicious guard dog. Right here you got some art too. I don't know what they're saying. Does anyone know? Oh, this is a picture of the resort. That's cool. It's what they used to think about the place before. Well, it turned into this. It's pretty sad, honestly. Well, this is the auditorium, I guess. Like where they do plays and shit. Yo, I found a construction hat, whatever this thing is, and a bongo. Whoa. See all the chairs are just stacked on top of each other. The lamp. Hopefully that didn't fall from the ceiling. Look at this, it's a soundboard. Look at the old ass TV. It's fucking dope. You can have the mic. Does it still work? It's probably no power. What's up? Testing, 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 testing. For the rest of the video, I should wear this helmet. I think I found the fucking gassing room, holy shit. This tree fucking ga gassed in here. Some of you might get creeped out a little bit. Going down here. Alright. Thing I haven't taken a shower for a while because there's a pool. And it's got a bit of water in it from the rain. Ah, uh, this might be tough. So I wanted to climb this shit at the top, if you can see. I wanted to just like kind of climb it, but it might be drenched in rain. We'll find out. Tell me I'm not a genius. I've collected a few bricks here, and I'm gonna stand on them to get some extra height. Probably thinking right now. Are you an idiot? Never knew anyone could be as dumb as you. This shit is breaking, dude. I find a really good discovery. There's a brand new ramen right here. It would be considered stealing if I took it. So I'm not gonna take it, but... Wait, there's a coke right there. It almost looks like cold. Is it? Definitely not cold. They didn't drink their coke or eat their ramen. The fuck? Alright, so somehow I've lost my flashlight, but the actual reception desk is right here. Alps Resort. Can't you just imagine all the cute Korean ladies behind the desk going, Annyeonghaseyo, welcome to Ops Resort! Can't you just imagine it? Um, <laughs> let's see if the power works. I'm sure as a kid we've all wanted to do this once or twice. It's jumping over the reception desk. But it always went better in our heads. Ow. Ah. Fuck. Ah. Hey, back surgery. Yeah, I don't know how power works, but I just assumed like one of these would probably still have power. I gotta go get back to get my flashlight. I left it in the pool room 100%. <sighs> this place, you know, the Alps Resort is like run down and a piece of shit. But how come the road is so bad? Like, I don't really get that. Did they like destroy the roads on purpose? Oh my god, the guard dog's over there. It really does blend in with the floor. Here it is, my flashlight. <sighs> I'm not gonna lie, this is pretty sick. Like, like sickening. As you walk around this place, you get a gut-wrenching realization to the reality that awaits many other businesses and failing industries all around the globe. 
I'm sure the owner of this place never thought about the fact that the rapid increase in the Korean economy would actually be the downfall of this empire. Alright, this is going to be the last building. Let's go to the top. Toilet right here. Ew, it's filled with feces. And the sink. <laughs> Take a sink with me. God, I found fucking sleeping bags or pillows. <laughs> Just slept in here last night. That's not safe. Rad. I feel like I'm walking down to an exit in fucking Tarkov right now. Who the fuck am I? this place? It's like blocked off. What's it say? Zuma says you're not allowed in here. Is this the sewer? Oh my god, this is the sewer, isn't it? Alright, so well, I hope you guys enjoyed this place. From here, we are going to enjoy ourselves some North Korean cuisine. So if we go slightly east from here, there's a city with a lot of North Korean refugees. And apparently they make North Korean food. So, we are going to go try it. Alright, so as you can see right over here, across the river, it's an interesting architecture, is Abai Village. We are going to go there, and we are going to get ourselves some North Korean dinner. Let's get going. Alright, so there's a term for a big percentage of the population here. IDP otherwise known as internally displaced person, basically referring to a refugee or someone who had to flee their country because of armed or some type of crazy conflict. All right, so to the average person, this is just gonna look like a bridge, but it is so much more than that. This is what connects the city, or this is what connects this part of the city to where all of these North Korean refugees now um, live and are going to die because they're in their 80s and 90s. It's very, Cool and romantic and amazing. Be wrong, but these homes that you're seeing here, you can tell they're all kind of like shitty, small. They're made with like weird types of things. And a lot of these houses originally were shacks. And I believe over the years, you know, they've kind of cleaned them up and made them, you know, high quality houses, kind of like this one. This one's kind of like a shack though. Yeah, because they, they lived in these very small shack, like small homes back then. So a lot of these people, or most likely from North Korea. You can tell how weird the city is designed here. There's murals on the walls too. Um, I'm not exactly sure what they mean. It's a depiction of when all the refugees were fleeing, you know, the north and coming here. I guess they look sort of like this. And they use, I guess, cows or bulls or whatever. I'm not sure what these are depicting over here. Um, yeah, someone can maybe explain this one to me. Pretty interesting, then. So you'll notice what a lot of people have done here. They've basically turned their shitty situation into a good one. How? By turning it into basically a tourist attraction. You know, they write on the food. North Korean food or that type of stuff. And a bunch of people think, whoa, like me and you. Yeah, that's what they did. It's how they turned their shitty situation into a good one. These, you know, homes. Pretty smart. All right, so here's the restaurant I decided to go to. All right, so it says right here, North Korean style sausage. So we should be all good. All right, so right here, I've gotten both of the dishes. Right here is the North Korean stuffed sausage or whatever. And on the other side is, famous in this area, it is stuffed squid. All right, so let's try the North Korean sausage. It's definitely got an interesting, um, taste to it. Would I eat this normally? Probably. Mm. I mean, it's not that bad, to be honest. This is apparently super famous in the area. I do not like seafood, nor do I like squid. But, I will try it anyway. You don't even really taste the squid. What the squid leg looks like inside of it. So after eating the North Korean delicacies, I went down to the river. Hi, thanks for watching the fifth installment of Slightly Homeless. If I don't die from asbestos, mold, and all the other good stuff, uh, you'll see me back later this week or next week. A little bit of a problem. I am getting very low on 
you know, money, living, staying in Korea. Like, I'm fine with the homeless thing, but in order to edit videos and, you know, live a semi-normal life, I gotta have some stuff. So, if you could, check out my Patreon. If you give me money, basically, I'll be on the streets longer. If you pledge over $10, I'll print out any picture you send me, and I'll fucking slap it on a wall and be in the next video. Anyways, thanks for watching. Support the homelessness.